Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about how to write a research paper. So in this section, we will discuss its language aspect like what kind of language we should use while writing a paper. Some people think that ChatGPT or other AI tools can write good research papers for them. But the fact is, if you don't know about these things, then you can't take maximum output from these AI tools because at the end of the day, you are the only one who is going to connect various parts of your paper. First, let us discuss what are the parts of a research paper. So first of all, we have one abstract. We write a short note about the work. After that, we come to the introduction. Then we explain the methodology through which we have performed this work or this experiment. Then we observe some results and we mention them in results section. Thereafter, we come to discussion session and we discuss the interpretations of the results obtained in the previous section. Finally, we reach to the conclusion where we summarize everything and conclude the overall finding of this work. The use of AI tools for paper writing is okay, but this refined knowledge can make you 10x faster in paper writing and very precise in structuring it. This video is sponsored by nobody because my views don't shoot like they do for popular science videos. This is highly research oriented and concentrated experience knowledge not appealing for general public. Instead, I would say that this video is sponsored by you because you are the main supporter of my content. So if you find this video useful, please don't forget to contribute whatever you feel is okay for this content. So let's move forward towards the content. Now let us start. What are the aspects of language while writing a research paper? So basically in this work, we are going to discuss about tenses in which part, what kind of tenses you should use and some other general knowledge things which you should take care while writing a research paper. So basically what the tenses are expressing. So first of all, the tense explains the concern of time means when this event happened, whether it happened in past, present or future. The next information we can get out of the tenses is whether the information is open or closed. For an example, just imagine you are writing a research paper and you are still writing it and your supervisor comes to you and asks, how long have you been writing this paper? And in the second condition, when you have already written your research paper, you have already completed it. In that condition, your supervisor comes and asks how long it took you to write this paper means you have already finished it and how long it took. So this is a closed event means the process has been finished. Now let us move towards the first part of our explanation which is the abstract. It refers to the unpublished results which you have already obtained. So in this case we use simple past tense. We can have an example. Let us consider we have a chemical A and we are explaining it in a few lines like chemical A was prepared to obtain the property B. It was prepared by process C. The tests D, E and F were conducted on A to verify the property B. So in this way, we have used simple past tense. After that, we come to introduction. Introduction is the first tricky part of your paper to write. To become a master in that, let us understand it strategically. When you start writing an introduction, it comprises of background information to justify the importance of your work and the results obtained by you are still true and relevant. So we use the present tense. For an example, let us see chemical A is an integral part of the modern life. It is used in B, C and D drugs. Its shelf life in environment E is a recent research topic. So in this way, I am just putting the relevance of this research work and also giving the background information reg regarding the chemical A. In the second part of introduction, we refer the previous reports. So basically we write that this guy, this at L 
they have done this study they have done that kind of study so first we mention that and then finally by putting their research work we justify the validity of our research work so in this way present perfect tenses are used at such places justifying the validity of your work can be established in two ways one is positive and one is negative so when i talk about positive way then we have an example like the available literature has established a good shelf life of chemical a in condition b so you are giving credit to the literature that they have done this for some cases you can present it negatively like in this case not enough investigations have been reported regarding the shelf life of chemical a in condition b so in this case you are saying that this have not been studied yet and in this part we can also mix both some positive and some negative senses like ample research has been conducted on the shelf life of chemical a in condition b but only few reports check its relevance in condition c so in this way whatever is the length of your introduction but there are majorly these two parts in any introduction so if you keep them in mind and write according to this frame you can easily figure out what to write at what position and now we are coming to the method this portion discusses the information regarding how this study was performed just because this experiment has already been performed so a simple past tense is often used let's take an example chemical a was prepared using method b its shelf life was analyzed in condition c one thing you can notice in this example is that we have used a passive voice in this case we use passive voice because otherwise we have to write it like this we prepared chemical a we used method b just to avoid the use of i we they so we write it in the passive voice just to make it impersonal so now with this part some diagram figures and tables also come in the research paper so the diagram and figures are basically help to visualize the fact or concept written in the text so what is written in the text you are presenting them in a diagram or in a figure for better clarity so we mention them like this table 1 demonstrates the shelf life of chemical a in different conditions similarly figure 2 shows the decay mechanism of chemical a in condition b in this way we represent the diagrams figures and tables in text using present tense after that we come to the result section now we know that the experiment was performed in the past and the respective results were also obtained in the past so past tense is used to mention these results just for an example chemical a showed fast decay in condition b while it stay intact for longer in condition c the second trickiest part in a research paper is to write the discussion about it let us break this and understand this in parts so first of all in each discussion you have three major parts so it is a mixture in which you first summarize your results then you interpret your results and then explain the significance of your results just because you obtained your results in the past so we summarize our results in the past the interpretation we do in present tense and then explain its significance also in present tense let us take an example chemical a showed a low decay under condition b so this is the summary of your results you obtained earlier after that you come to an interpretation that therefore it can be stored for a longer time in condition b so this is an interpretation after that what is the significance so this signifies a better shelf life so this is a simplest example of this structure but you will not always find all these three points sometimes the summary of your results in itself is a kind of interpretation so the results are that straight forward so that you need not to interpret them for the reader and sometimes your interpretation is just enough 
to explain its significance so in this way we find this pattern this particular pattern repeatedly in our discussion but sometimes your interpretation is tentative or sometimes it is almost confirmed like you conduct an experiment and after that experiment sometimes you are pretty sure about the mechanism because all the results are directing in one direction but sometimes you face the condition when you can't clearly mention the mechanism of your outcome to be specific in those cases you should mention them cleverly in first case when you are tentative about your result you can say like uh, as chemical a lasts for longer time in condition b but not in condition c therefore it is possible that some other factor is influencing the outcome so in this case you don't have a clear cut answer to your results but in the second case we see as chemical a lasts for longer time in condition b but not in condition c but this time you feel that your results are quite clear so therefore the quantity d is responsible for this outcome so in this way you can mention your outcome and after that this is a general mistake done by many people so basically when you write about a figure sometimes people use a present tense and sometimes people use past tense to finish this ambiguity i would advise you to fix your position while explaining figures so be clear are you explaining the figure or you are explaining the data keep in mind and keep it the same throughout your writing so in first example let us take when we explain figure the figure 2 shows that the life of chemical a increases with the change in condition b so in this way i am explaining what i am looking in the figure but in case when i am looking in the figure but i am explaining my data which was observed earlier in the past in that case i say the figure 2 shows that the life of chemical a increased with the change in condition b so in this way i am explaining my data but i am mentioning the figure many people confuse with these terms and they sometimes explain figure while other times they explain their data and mix these sentences so you can think of it and decide what pattern you want to keep for your writing so after this we finally come to the conclusion here you may use a combination of tenses to summarize your results and present the centralized theory you obtained out of your work like chemical a worked better in condition b and c but not in d the common factors e and f are responsible for this so whereas the additional studies are necessary to determine the effect of condition d on chemical a many people mix up the abstract and conclusion or they write similar abstract and conclusion but if it is clear in your mind that conclusion is not the abstract in abstract what you have done is the main concern and the main concern of conclusion is that what you have observed out of this study so in this way you can write your research paper now i want to add some general tips so first of all the major requirement for writing a research paper is that the language should be formal in tone so you can avoid some short form of verbs such as would and doesn't it is so like this and also avoid words like and but at the beginning of the sentence also don't use informal words such as give up put up other than this the language should be impersonal in style that's why we use the passive form and some other language tips that you should add to writing is first avoid jargon and filler so basically fillers are some things which are not necessary explain something but just to increase your content you are writing the second thing every subject has a specific vocabulary so you should use that subject specific vocabulary so that the reader feel like you are a professional and have a very good command on the subject after that there should not be any ambiguity in your language when you write one line so there should be one straight meaning and finally you should vary the length of your sentences some people write very short sentences some people 
use too many connectors and write very big sentence both are not considered as good so you should mix them to write both short and long sentences so finally i guess these things are quite useful for you to write a research paper these are my references once again this video is sponsored by you please don't forget to contribute whatever you feel is okay for this content on the links given in the description thanks for watching if you like this video please share this with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you